Okay, thanks for having me. We, um, I'm, I'm an academic, so please don't expect TED Talk sort of presentation. I think they are creating a reasonable expectations about what academics can say. Um, uh, also, you will see that my use of PowerPoint slides is very uh, rudimental, I would say. <laughs> um, however, the content should be interesting for you because uh, I'm going to present uh, a very large study that was funded by the European Commission about developing protective measures for consumers based on the framework of nudging that we have seen so well explained this morning by Silla. Um, so uh, some of the questions I guess you had this morning maybe could be answered by uh, what we have done. Um, a bit of background, um, the European Commission has started in 2011 uh, a big framework contract about doing behavioral research to inform policy making. Um, I'm part of a consortium led by the London School of Economics, my alma mater, uh, in which we have done a number of studies, one on uh, tobacco labeling, uh, one on car labeling, and one on online gambling, which is the one I'm going to present today, and uh, a few more. Um, in terms of, uh, of uh, just a little refresh uh, of what we have said uh, this morning, um, the idea that we have when we test these nudges is that we have a dual system in our minds that we can tap in to nudge people to behave in one direction or the other. Uh, what we call the system one, which uh, this morning was described as the, the hot uh, state of mind, in which essentially what people do is rely a lot on mental shortcuts or heuristics. And, you know, um, I don't like to call it irrational because these heuristics, in most of the cases, they do work and they're actually very effective to cope with reality. But, unfortunately, when used in, in context that they are a bit different from which they were, in a way, designed to respond, they might lead to biases and then to irrational behavior. Um, and the other one is system two. System two is essentially our deliberative system where we, um, in fact, take the time to consider the pro and cons on something. We assess data. We make uh, usually rule-based uh, decisions. So we are much more pondered in what we do. Now, when we intervene in terms of nudging, I think there are really two strategies as pretty much reminded this morning. Uh, one is that you want to move from system one to system two when possible. So nudge people to be more conscious in the kind of uh, decisions they make. But another way is to use system one, to use the rules we have embedded, to nudge people in the direction that you want. Okay. In the approach of our uh, study, we used both nudges that they appeal to system one and system two, which are represented here also by uh, um, a turtle, meaning this kind of uh, slow pondering uh, cognition, and by a very fast rabbit. Um, what we have done was a very large study in which we have done a lab experiments in the UK, plus an online experiments with seven countries, which I'll mention in a few seconds, where we tested uh, interventions about um, inducing more responsible gambling behavior uh, on a number of, uh, or, and we measured the outcome of a number of different things. Uh, for example, how people betted, um, for how much time they betted, and a number of other things. Uh, this is Im an important point because when you want to test the effectiveness of some of the, these interventions, you always have to be very careful in designing what the, is the outcome you are measuring. And of course, in a complex situation like gambling, there are many outcomes that you, you might want to compare the results in terms of effectiveness of the intervention that you are doing. Okay. Um, what we did was we selected two games, uh, uh, which I guess are visually uh, less attractive of the ones you used, but the idea was that we designed platforms in which we had full control of the platforms of what was going on. So the subjects of our experiments will go online, play these two games, and we will randomly allocate it on different groups, and these games will be will be different in terms of the interventions we add to them. Okay. Uh, the design was, uh, this is a bit the methodological geek in me, so forgive me about these two slides, uh, but uh, it wasn't easy and it wasn't simple. The reason is because when you design these experiments, you have to make sure that you can very much single out the effect of the 
treatments that you are uh, introducing and making sure that there's not anything else that is producing changes in the behavior of people. Um, the main important thing here is that what we have done was to test not just at two different stages, pre-gamble and during gamble. Okay? Pre-gamble meaning we tested it in some interventions before people started playing and then in the second stage we tested some interventions while they were playing. Okay. Uh, that's the online experiments design. Uh, very similar. Of course, there is an element here of, of uh, uh, randomization, meaning that people, are, uh, in, when we do this kind of experiments, are randomly allocated to different conditions where we add the, the interventions that we are talking about. These are the countries from which the, particip the, the participants of the line experiment came from, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Sweden, UK and Estonia. So it's a very large study for this kind of studies because uh, can tell you that ten they tend to be expensive both in resources and time and programming and, and analysis of data. So it's, it's not a common thing to have a cross-national online experiments of these sites. Um, so uh, what we have measured was a set of behavioral measures, time per bet, amount per bet, opt-in and opt-out, when people will stop or not playing, uh, and then um, if they, they, they would continue batting afterwards. Uh, then we had also some emotional uh, measurements and also some cognitive measurements, plus uh, something about future intentions of continue gambling after the experience of, of playing our game. Now, measurement is also a very important issue here because uh, when we intervene in nudges, we want to change behavior. And in order to see the effect of the ch these changes in behavior, you have to measure behavior. And to measure behavior, likely, in the case of online gambling, is possible because you collect the data about what people bet, uh, um, the amount of, people, uh, amount of money people bet, for how long they play, all this information is recorded. So you have this information there. In other cases, other, other studies we've done, it's not that straightforward to, to find uh, behavioral measures for your intervention. So, uh, what we have tested? We have tested uh, a number of nudges. Um, some uh, were um, uh, pre-gamble and other in-gamble. The main ones was a pictorial warning. Pretty much look like uh, the warnings that you see uh, on a number of different products that are telling you about the risks of, in this case, of gambling. I'll show you some example. One was uh, an overconfidence task. The logic about this nudge was that we are pretty bad in judging probabilities. And the games we have selected, they are all game of chance. So the idea was, if I show you how bad you are in judging probability, perhaps that will make you a bit more savvy in the way how you play, all right? So uh, we ask people to play, uh, to solve a little puzzle, if you want, related to probabilities, and then let them play. To see, we show them how good they, they've done it in solving the puzzle. So relatively speaking, how bad they were, and then we let them play. Um, we had a, um, a, a, another intervention was a push pop-up menu saying that you, reminding you that you were losing money, a certain amount of, of uh, money and time. Another one was uh, a default option, so we fixed the monetary limit in the beginning. And another option was to ask people to define their limit, so a self-defined monetary limit. And we actually tested a few more, but uh, I will never be able to discuss them in 15 minutes, so I'm making a super short version. I mean, the report is 200 pages, so extremely interesting uh, reading. So what we found out? Um, well, here, a bit divided about lab and online experiments for a number of reasons, but um, what you have to look for is basically the green thing. When there's the green thing, it means something worked. When there is a white thing, something didn't work. When you have the other two, they worked in the opposite direction. Means they increased uh, gambling or the amount of time for gambling. Because, you know, until you test, you never know if the, the interventions go in the direction you want. Pre-gamble. Nothing word worked. Actually, what happened was that people tended to gamble um, for a bit more time, um, both in the full sample 
and in the we here we have divided between full sample meaning general population and then uh, the subsample of gamblers meaning people that have a bit more uh, experience in gambling because we wanted to see if experience was a factor uh, changing this so to make a long story short uh, pre gamble nothing really works in meaning that it doesn't affect uh, the 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 fact you know people will uh, what uh, will the amount of time and the amount of money that people will gamble. Actually, it might backfire. Text on warning and overconfidence, for whatever reason, uh, we have some hypotheses, of course, uh, produce what is a sort of a licensing effect, uh, meaning that people tended to gamble more, actually, rather than less. Um, can skip that. Um, however, in gamble measures, uh, they do. They did have a, a, a considerable amount of effect. Uh, in fact, uh, both the fixed limits and the self-defined limits they worked on uh, both time and amount of of money uh, bet per spin. Uh, per spin means in this case for session of gaming, and it worked for the full sample and for gamblers. There are some nuances there. You see some white dots here, here and there, but again, to make a long story short, what you have here is that. In gamble measures, protective measures based on nudging tend to work more than pre-gamble measures. One of the reasons I think is because once you start playing, you enter this tunnel, it's actually called in psychology tunneling, you are in a flow of gaming in which if you set the conditions for this tunnel at the beginning, it would work, but if you try to intervene in, uh, to move people out of this tunnel, of this flow, it won't work. So all the warnings that we had in Gamble, for example, they didn't work. If you have a pop-up menu, it wouldn't affect anything uh, about the, the behavior of people. And here we have some other example. Um, now, this is an interesting, uh, another, um, these are the full list of pre-Gamble measures. We had a pictorial warning, a test warning, the overconfidence test I mentioned, we had a logo, in which uh, a logo that would say that this uh, platform was safe to bet, so, so, so some, some sort of uh, self-assurance about the, uh, the honesty of the provider with the banners, terms and conditions, registration form, and so on. Um, again, we had something that worked, uh, particularly about the time per spin, but we had also some, some uh, contrasting results in the case of the registration form. Here is a clear example of licensing effect, meaning I'm going to fill in the, 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 the form, register, provide you all the information, I've done my duty, now I want to bet more. So this is a, a one of those cases. Um, conclusions. Um, as I mentioned before, pre-gamble treatments tend to be not effective. Um, and in some cases, they might have unintended consequences, as in the case of, of uh, registration. So regulation in imposing registration forms might actually backfire. Um, in terms of gamble measures, they, they tend to alter the flow between gamblers and the platform. So they tend to be effective and in a rather systematic way. Um, few words of caution. Um, when you do these sort of experiments, when you do this sort of testing, uh, one important expression is ecological validity, meaning are these experiments, all these results applicable to any platform that is out there? And so are they, if you want, generalizable to all conditions? The correct answer is really we don't know. And the reason is because uh, each platform might have elements of design in their platform that might alter these results. However, what we know from these results is that what works and what doesn't work, and we have a direction in which we can go and test further what might work and, and what in instead is not really promising as an intervention. Um, from a, an academic perspective, that's the best you can guess, really, uh, meaning that it, you know, um, it's a starting point. It's never really the end. Uh, but this is a study that I think is one of the ex those examples that show that you can do evidence-based policy. This is the study that accompanied the recommendation of the European Commission that was uh, shown before, the one of 2014. Um, so I guess 
the report is out there, so someone already has done a bit of research that you can look into it. Um, these studies are rather complex and, and take a bit of time, so I guess that my final really words of warning is that from the initial idea, so what you want to test in terms of nudging to operationalized in testing into experiments, especially in large online experiments, there's a big gap. And the devil is in the details there. So it requires quite a lot of work in how you can do uh, a scientifically sound testing. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's everything. I think I've been in uh, yeah. the time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.